muscles are like usually very long and taxing and I'd like to have a job on the side, how would that work? Depends on your job and depends on your rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, by the way, that is why waitering is a go-to profession, right? I mean, that's one of the big reasons why waitering has developed into the iconic profession of the actor, right? Not because there, not because it lacks anything, it's because of what it provides: cash, right? Flexible schedule. You can you can work right. at different times, and so if, if they call you and they say, "Well, I need you," you know, Monday Monday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and you go. Oh, then you go to your friend. You say, "Would you switch with me? And we, can I take the lunches? And you can, can I move over the weekend or move off a weekend?" And you can do that in certain professions. Now, if you're an office manager, you know, at some corporation, maybe not. Uh, you know, I heard uh, we had at the school once Annette Benning came in with uh, Alfred Molina and talked to our students. Right, two just adorable people and really smart actors. And someone I'd asked, say A-list actors. A-list actors, yes, for sure. Uh, in so many ways, you know, not, not just in name, but just in the sort of quality of people they are and, and the way they dealt with my students was just, you know, beautiful to watch. And someone asked Fred, I said, what advice would you give to someone just starting out? And he said, live cheaply. <laughs> I thought that wasn't what I expected, right? But it wasn't exactly take fountain either. You know, it, it was real advice. He said, if, if you can't give up that shift, right, or you can't get off of work that day because you can't afford it, then you can't take that acting job, right? You've got to wait until something, until you can get an acting job that's going to pay you enough to pay your rent. And that's hard. If you live inexpensively, you can take that, you know, that show at a 40 seat theater and, you know, up in someone's attic. And you never know what leads to what. You know, when we talked about the soap opera, the more you're acting, the more you get to act. Mm -hmm. And it's like that in every profession. The more you're doing it, the more you get to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's much harder when you're sitting around for months not acting. And then somebody, you know, Mark says, well, we need you, fight captain, great. Well. You got a job? Yeah, yeah, but, and now, but, you, know, who, you know, look at basketball players. You want to sit on the bench for three months and then, and then get in at crunch time? No, you want to be playing, you want to be in rhythm. So if you can be acting more and have a job right, as an actor, that's good. So living cheaply is actually brilliant in that regard. Right? It lets you do a lot of things. It lets you get into a class. Right? If you have maybe lower expenses, you can stay in class longer. It keeps you acting every day or, or two times a week or three times a week. So that when, when you go in to see Mark, you feel good about where you are. You have a resource to be prepared. You, know, you, don't, you don't feel stuck. Just the, you know, I pass that on to you as the gift still from, from Alfred. <laughs> but it's a, it's a kind of resourcefulness that you have to dig deep and figure out. You have to figure out how to make your life work so that all the various needs are met, including your need to be a performer. 